Geneva, a neutral setting was picked as a site for the new nuclear negotiation. Geneva's UN headquarters often hosts major conferences, but in fact, the four-star Intercontinental Hotel, a few blocks away, turned out to be the center of activity. The principal players from the six powers and Iran found themselves staying under one roof. It was its own United Nations, and that called for the most intense security. The lobby quickly became the place where journalists from around the world swarmed. Any rumor would set off a frenzy, reporters tweeting and retweeting furiously, often to themselves. While the diplomats moved from meeting to meeting on the upper floors, the press waited for any news, good or bad. Twitter diplomacy gave way to Twitter journalism, at least for a while. One reporter tweets, Wendy Sherman leaves hotel. Another tweets back, whoa, if true. Upstairs, diplomats could move unobserved from room to room. Iranian security let our team pass to meet the Iranian foreign minister the night before the negotiations began. Salam. <laughs> oh, no. Stay, stay, stay. No, don't get up. Stay, it, sounds, it looks like your back is still hurting there. Yeah. Yeah? Back and leg, please. Oh, may I Have thank you? You didn't do anything physically to cause it to happen. Well, I had 14 meetings a day in New York. Uh -huh. <laughs> If yeah. that isn't enough for you. And not, not including all the reporting appearances, the yeah. interviews and everything. Yeah. Yeah. What gives you the most optimism on this eve before the beginning of these talks? Uh, probably the fact that everybody has tried everything else. Uh, there's a saying that we always choose the right way after trying all the wrong ways. <laughs> I think over the last 10 years, we have all tried all the wrong ways. And now there's only one option left to choose the right way. And when you see the right way, when you envision it, because I can see in your eyes there's a kind of clarity about what you think that is. What is the right way? The right way is to understand that in today's international environment, there can be no winners and losers. That's the nature of global uh, political environment. You cannot have security while others are insecure. You cannot have prosperity while others live in poverty. Probably, if anything, 9-11 should have proved that to all of us, that an island of security in an unsecure world is impossible. On another floor, the American delegation, where we talked to the chief negotiator, Wendy Sherman, one hour before the sessions began. Did you get any sleep last night? <laughs> yeah, do I look like I didn't get any sleep? <laughs> well, you look rested. I'm just assuming, given the nature of what you have ahead of you. I was a little you. bit restless last night. What would you say accounted for your restlessness? I think it is just not knowing what we're going to be presented with this morning. Are you feeling hopeful? I or always feel sorry. hopeful. I always feel hopeful. Uh, former Secretary of State Madeleine Albright used to say she was an optimist who worried a lot. And I think I'm an optimist who worries a lot. And this is truly a situation where the devil is all in the details. Zarif did what he had to do despite his bad back. He had on Facebook, no less, blamed it on the stress of the hardliners' attacks on him. The world's press focused on these representatives of seven nations and these two days of negotiations. Reporters had no idea other players were working in the back channel. Between formal sessions, much of the hard work got done back inside the private hotel rooms. Just came back from the embassy uh, to make some secure calls back uh, to Washington, give them a debrief. Wendy Sherman actually had to coordinate two teams. And on the sanction side, uh, they understand these systems. They understand what needs to be done. There was this official team and the Burns and Sullivan back channel team. At the end of the two days, it seemed a great deal had been accomplished. There was a sense of goodwill all around. It seemed possible to devise a way for Iran to roll back its nuclear program in return for a relaxation of the crippling economic sanctions. At the closing news conference, Zarif said, we will be doing the negotiation in the negotiating room and not in the press. The press was left to speculate, to tweet. The Guardian reporter tweets, Iran hints at significant concessions over nuclear program. Wendy Sherman had seen several earlier negotiations go nowhere. What was different about these talks? Well, first, I think what pops in my mind is first they were in English. Uh, all the other previous sessions I've been part of have been in Farsi, 
with interpretation. Secondly, there was candor. In the two years I've been doing this, and many of my colleagues have been doing it a lot longer, uh, I've never sat in a meeting with such direct candor, willingness to ask questions and answer questions. Foreign Minister Zarif's efforts, in spite of his back pain, had clearly made an impression. Uh, he is a human being. He was in uh, real pain. He came, he did his job, uh, and uh, he put his ideas on the table. Was it an icebreaker in some ways? To show your humanity to someone? Well, I, I don't know. We, we all know the foreign minister. As you recall, he lived in the United States for like 30 years. He knows us. Uh, it probably helps because he knows how to work with us. Uh, it's probably sometimes um, uh, catches you by surprise and you have to stop and remember this is not an American, <laughs> this is an Iranian uh, with different interests trying to accomplish different things. Uh, so it can be seductive in a not useful way in a negotiation, so you have to be very conscious. But he is a uh, personable uh, person, he can be quite charming, as you probably know. And so at the end of the two days... I hope you've had a good day. We've had a good day. Yeah. Now we have to start the serious work of moving forward with implementation and agreement. Agreement and then implementation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So and we'll see. Yeah. So we'll see. I'm going to give it a try. The success of this first round of negotiations owed much to the back channel. Seven nations accomplished a great deal in two days because Americans and Iranians working the back channel had put in many more hours hammering out differences and creating drafts of an agreement. So with this back channel setting the groundwork, was there a sense, do you have a sense now, that had it not been for this back channel, we would not be here today? Well, we had, I mean, it, it certainly contributed to moving forward, but at the same time, it created uh, a very serious uh, problem of confidence because uh, of what happened in the second round of negotiations in Geneva. Indeed, round two would go terribly, terribly off course. And the fact that the first round went so smoothly would rouse opponents of the deal.